What, if any, are the benefits of tying health insurance to employment as in the US, over other systems? Over the last two weeks, over 10 million US workers lost their jobs. For many of them the loss of their job means the loss of their health insurance as well. More than 3 million Americans just lost their jobs in the middle of a global pandemic. For those whose jobs offered benefits, that also probably means they're losing their health insurance, too, exposing yet another way in which the U.S. health system is vulnerable amid a public health emergency. How do 3 million newly unemployed people get health care? Vox March 27, 20. This seems to me like an obscene risk accumulation to tie your job and your health insurance, especially in a country where employment at will is still widespread. Why does the U.S. stick with this system rather than switching to a system where your health insurance is independent of the employment no matter whether organized by private or general health insurance? First, let's be clear, employers do not offer benefits like health insurance naturally. If we go back to the early stages of industrialization, employers merely offered salaries, often paltry salaries, at that. Benefits, as the name implies, came into play later, they were meant as incentives to hire and retain engineers, high-level management, or highly skilled workers, all of whom were in short supply and high demand as industries expanded and diversified. Benefits only extended to low-level workers as the result of union activity, either as a direct result of collective bargaining or an indirect result where employers offered benefits to keep workers from unionizing. Benefits, from the employer's perspective, are merely a cost-benefit issue, the minimum expenditure required to prevent greater losses from employee attrition or further union activity. The U.S. has always been a capitalist, corporatist nation. U.S. institutions are geared to preserve the health and well-being of corporations, not the health and well-being of employees, and in those contexts where it does not explicitly forbid unionization or collective action, it does not interfere with corporate efforts to minimize the impact of such activities. The reason employers prefer this benefits scenario is that it keeps payouts entirely within the corporate cost accounting system. The corporation decides how much it is going to commit to employee benefits. The corporation chooses benefits plans that best fit its own profit maximization. The corporation can, as necessary, fire employees, change benefits, alter payouts, move money around, or otherwise control the way the benefits are handled. The more that benefits are shifted off to the government, through things like minimum wage guarantees, public health options, guaranteed leaves, etc., the more that money for these benefits leaves corporate control. Public health options, for instance, mean that employers cannot minimize their costs by seeking out cheap plans, cannot preclude payments for expensive procedures of ongoing medical issues, and are ultimately responsible for the health of the entire populace, not merely the limited and controllable population of current employees. The problem isn't even necessarily that their tax burden will increase, though that is a fear. The problem is that money paid into taxes for public benefits is money they lose control of, and cannot manipulate to increase their profit margin. Of course, this leaves us in the unenviable position we are in now, in which we effectively have to bribe employers with public funds so that they don't fire employees. En masse. Costing people their livelihoods and health coverage in the middle of a pandemic. But that's life in a corporatist state. 